Welcome, big hand, to Elon Musk. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, John. Oh, how are you? Good. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we, have two, we have two <laughs> days of AI and Gen AI and whatever, but you look real. My head is very big in the screen. Added reality too, I suppose. <laughs> we um, have had so much talk about AI in these two days, so we need your okay. opinion. What do you think about the next five to ten years on AI? Please give us a view. Artificial insemination? Artificial intelligence. Yeah. What do you think about that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But try, try audience, I must say. Um, uh, yes, artificial intelligence is, is, is certainly going to profoundly change the world. I mean, one of the most significant ways is self-driving. So we've been putting a lot of effort into self-driving technology for cars. You, you don't see it quite as much in Europe because we, we first have to make it work in the U.S. before we increase the complexity of trying to make it elsewhere in the world. But I think we're quite close to having the car be fully autonomous. So for example, like right now, I could, I'm in Austin, and if I wanted to drive, say, to the airport, the car could take me to the airport with no interventions. Using, and all it's using are digital neural nets, in other words, artificial intelligence, and cameras. So there's no LiDAR, radar, nothing. And in fact, if you think about how humans drive cars, humans are biological neural nets, and we use eyes. So it's the eyes and biological neural nets, the analog is digital. The analog for digital is cameras and uh, digital neural nets. This is working remarkably well. The, it has been quite difficult to do this because it turns out that in, in order to use the, in order for this to work, the car has to really be quite fully intelligent. Really, as, as a subset, for example, it has to learn how to read everything and, and, and how to assess intention among drivers and, and pedestrians. Okay. So it's, 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 it's you're, you're end up creating sort of a baby artificial general intelligence to solve this, but. This will obviously be extremely profound, and obviously I'm talking about automotive here. I'll get into the broader question in, in a minute. But the the average use of a passenger vehicle is only about 10 hours per week out of 100 hours. At the point at which it is autonomous, I think you would see probably a third of the hours being used because it would be like a taxi. Maybe my guess is like 50 to 60 hours, which means that the utility of a passenger vehicle would increase by uh a factor of five, and this is this is gigantic. But we'll see. So, so that that's the automotive. Then there's what people think have certainly experienced online, where you can ask it a question and ask for an essay or a picture or to understand a picture, and that is progressing rapidly. But what, what I'm seeing in terms of AI compute is I, I've never seen any technology advance faster than this. The the artificial intelligence compute coming online appears to be increasing by a factor of 10 every six months. Like, obviously, that cannot continue at such a high rate for forever or, or to exceed the mass of the universe, but I've never seen anything like it. And this is why you see NVIDIA's market cap being so gigantic, because they currently have the best neural net chips. I mean, I think the didn't NVIDIA's market cap exceed the GDP of Canada or something recently, and it was quite high. So, yeah. You know, it, it may go higher, who knows? The chip rush is bigger than any gold rush that has ever existed. So, and then there will also be robots, like humanoid, humanoid robots, not, not just sort of industrial, industrial, industrial robots we are, of course, familiar with. You use industrial robots, we use industrial robots, everyone does. But they are very programmed explicitly, and they don't, they don't walk around. But Tesla, with, for example, with the Optimus program, is making a humanoid robot that is capable of doing almost anything a human can do. Um, I mean, I, hope, I just hope the, hope the robots are nice to us. You know? We hope so. <laughs> we hope so too, Elon, that the robots will be yeah, nice yeah. to us. And maybe, let's say, in this regard, because you are working on op what can we expect <laughs> of, let's say, support which is going to come, maybe also a little bit with regard to production, because in the Bosch Connected world, we were also discussing application of AI, Gen AI, into production in order to boost productivity. Maybe a couple of thoughts on this one, too. Well, I, the, the plus side of AI is that I think productivity will increase dramatically. So across every field, whether it be manual labor to supply chain logistics, there's already a lot of movement to use chatbots, like sophisticated chatbots for customer service, for example, where they can answer Quite, quite complex questions already. But I, I mean, I think we really are on the edge of 
probably the biggest technology revolution that has ever existed. You know, there's supposedly a sort of a Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. Well, we live in the most interesting of times, the most interesting. And for, for a while there, I was a little bit, it was making me a bit, a bit depressed, frankly, because I was like, well, will we be, will they take over? Will we be useless? But then the way that I reconciled myself to this question was, would I rather be alive to see the AI apocalypse or not? And I'm like, I guess I'd like to see it. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's a good thought. Going to be boring. That's a good thought because you mentioned that every six months, that's an exponential curve, right? Exponential curves are beautiful, like but there's so. kind of a question: where does it ever end, right? Do you see any end yet, or will it go on for three, four, five years like this? Because then we talk hundred folds, right? Thousand folds of time. Yeah, of, that's, of that's why. I said, obviously, you, you, yeah. I mean, you, you can't. You can't grow at that rate without quickly exceeding the mass of the universe. So clearly it's going to hit some constraints. The constraints that AI compute are very predictable. I've actually predicted this over a year ago. So over a year ago, the shortage was chips, neural net chips. Then I, I, it was very easy to predict that the, the, the next shortage will be voltage step-down transformers. So it's, you get, you've got to feed the power to these things. So if you've got 100 to 300 kilovolts coming out of your a utility and it's got to step all the way down to you know, 0.6 volts, that's a lot of stepping down. So now we're in step down, and I, this is my not that funny joke, which is that they need transformers to run transformers. Because, you know, the AI is like, there's this thing called a transformer in AI. It's a it's a neural, a neural, I don't know, it's a combination of sort of neural nets, and they're running out of transformers to run transformers. Then the next shortage will be electricity. So I think next year you'll see the electricity, that they just can't find enough electricity to run all the chips. I mean, w during the chip crisis, we certainly all did have many contacts Fortunately, we were able to master it together. Of course, we all would like uh, to avoid a second chip crisis. But with regard to your, to your comment on, on power demand, we all know today vehicles have three uh, to four kilowatt power demand for the peripherals. But this is continuously going up. And Tesla has recently launched the Cybertruck, which I believe is mostly coming with 48 volt. Do you see this as yeah. a, let's say, further disruption of automotive industry, <clears throat> another technology change within automotive? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, the, the automotive industry has been living with 12 volts for a very long time, a century roughly. I think it, it started off as six volts and then they needed a, a more powerful starter motor and then they doubled it to 12 volts, although It's, it's actually more like 13.7 volts. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, and, and the bus voltage actually varies a lot for those, since there are probably some electrical engineers in the audience. <laughs> it's like 12 volts is a very rough approximation. But it's, 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 really, it's really kind of an arbitrary low voltage. And if you look at, say, power Ethernet, it's running at 50 volts or roughly 48 volts. And we set it at 40, 48 volts because anything really above that, you start to run into regulatory concerns. And, and power Ethernet is, like I said, roughly at that level. But the advantage of obviously quadrupling the voltage is that you can substantially reduce how much copper uh, or, or conductor is used right. in the car. So you can use very small copper wires for, you know, it's a rough, roughly... A co roughly a quarter, not exactly a quarter, but roughly a quarter as much as, as much copper is needed for 48 volts as for 12. So I think it's a, it's a logical move. That's, that's really the next step for the low voltage architecture for the car. I think ultimately long term all cars will be 48. It's, it's interesting that many people love electric vehicles and want to have them, but some are harmed by a missing infrastructure. That would be the same actually as the I thing. We will have lots of chips ready, but we will have had the power to, to operate them. There's a race between infrastructure and technology right now. And uh, you're also certain technology may win, which is a problem because actually infrastructure should win we should have all the infrastructure we need is that correct yeah so thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much right. and uh, thank you extremely for 15 years of partnership and work together we're inspired always yeah. by your speed attitude aggressiveness and things come out thank you very much to elon musk all right and thank you for your support very, very much appreciate it so what you just saw there is elon musk being interviewed at bosch connected world and if you're not familiar bosch is a german engineering conglomerate they are massive and so they were interviewing Elon Musk about everything from AI to electric vehicles. And I cut out some of the electric vehicle stuff because it's not as related to artificial intelligence, but there was still tons to talk about with AI. Let me go over a few points. So first, Elon Musk said self-driving, full self-driving for everybody is actually really close. Now, he has said this a lot and he's been wrong 
a lot. We've been at about 80% of full self-driving for many years now, but that last 10 to 20% is where it really gets difficult. But I tend to be a techno optimist and I actually do think that full self-driving on any road anywhere in the world is actually closer than we think. And there are a lot of benefits of that. One that he pointed out is that currently usage of vehicles is probably about 10% of their actual life. So you drive to work, you drive to the store, you park, and then you go home. And most of the time, about 90% of the time, your vehicle just sits there. So all of a sudden, if the vehicles can drive themselves, they could potentially go run errands for you. They could potentially be shared amongst multiple families in your neighborhood. So the implications are really interesting to think about with this combination of AI and automotive. Now, what he also touched on is that he has never seen a technology be built this quickly. And specifically what he was talking about is AI compute the rollout of infrastructure to power AI models. And of course, most of that is being powered by NVIDIA chips. And that's also why they have doubled their revenue quarter after quarter, and now they are the third largest company in the entire world. And they have a huge moat. And one interesting stat that he pointed out is that compute coming online to power AI models is increasing by a factor of 10 every six months. That is insane to think about. Obviously at a certain point, we're gonna reach our needed capacity and then we're gonna build out past that. But I'm wondering if all of this build out is going to be a one-time build out or a continuous build out. And that's gonna really dictate how successful these chip companies are in the long run. Now, I tend to think that the chip build out is gonna be continuous because new chips are gonna come out, new technologies are gonna be discovered. If we move away from the Transformers architecture at a certain point, which, you know, we're probably not for a while, but those will need new chips. So as new tech is invented, new chips are gonna be built to service those specific technologies. And I love what he said about the AI chip rush being bigger than the gold rush. And he also talked about AI robots. And here's the thing, I'm super excited about robots. I've been making a lot of videos about robots lately. I had a prediction that humanoid robots were going to be a big thing in 2024. So. I am very, very bullish on robots, but he said he hopes robots will be nice to us. And he's saying that a bit tongue in cheek, but at the same time, I think he's a bit serious. And we know that he's afraid of AI in general, which I'll touch on in a minute. But if you've seen any of these robot demo videos, a lot of them are actually kind of mean to the robot, whether they're kicking the robot and trying to figure out if it can still stand after being kicked, pushed. There's examples of cleaning robots where somebody continuously makes a dish dirty again and again, and the robot has to keep cleaning it. So there's a lot of these examples where we're not being very nice to robots. And if they become sentient, that is not gonna reflect well for us. And he also said productivity will increase drastically because of AI. And of course, that is the most obvious statement ever. And I think a lot of people are worried about their jobs and they probably should be. But I think overall, the productivity increases from AI will be beneficial to humanity. And for all of these jobs lost, I think it's actually gonna be jobs transformed and new jobs created, as it has been with almost every other previous technology. And he also said we're on the edge of the biggest technological revolution that he could ever imagine. So it's super exciting to be here, but he's also worried about AI, as I mentioned earlier. He said we live in the most interesting times and at times that has made him quite depressed because he thinks once AI reaches AGI, there is a chance, no matter how small it is, that AGI takes over and becomes the dominant quote unquote race. And as he said, it made him depressed for a while. But the way that he was able to reconcile all of it is, would he rather be around during the AI apocalypse or not? And he said, yeah, I probably would be. So, you know, you never know exactly what Elon is thinking, but he has actually said that exact thing multiple times in the past in different interviews. Now, I personally don't think there's gonna be an AI apocalypse, but of course, who can predict? If you're creating life, essentially life that is vastly smarter than you, there is a chance that you are not the top of the food chain anymore. And one interesting tidbit that I had not actually thought about is, okay, right now we have kind of a chip shortage and chips are what power these AI models, but what powers the chips? It's electricity. 
And he actually thinks there might be an electricity shortage. And he might be saying that because, of course, Tesla is becoming and kind of is a massive energy company based in electricity. So there's this chance where Tesla, with their supercharger network, with their battery products with their solar products become one of the biggest energy companies in the world. So they're not even just an auto company at that point. And not only that, he actually talked about a specific hardware product that he thinks we'll have a shortage for in the near future, and that is step-down transformers. And I didn't actually know what that was, I had to look it up. But basically you're taking electricity from the wall or from the line itself, and this is uh, usually a massive amount of electricity. And to power these chips, you actually need to lower the voltage down to a very small fraction of what is coming in, and that is called a step-down transformer. And he thinks we're gonna be running out of those soon. So that's super interesting. I'm definitely gonna go research who builds step down transformers. And uh, this is not investment advice, of course, but that's something that I'm gonna be looking into. So I thought that was a really interesting interview, some of which we've heard before from Elon, others I am hearing for the first time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.